For this Sunday's case study, I'm gonna go through something that's so common that I do several cases of this per week as a spine surgeon. So we have a 28 year old male who presents after feeling a pop in his back after doing some deadlifts. Over the course of several days, he began to develop pain that radiated down his back into his right butt cheek and down the leg to the foot. It was really severe when it started and he went to his primary care doctor and received a course of physical therapy, oral steroids, muscle relaxants, but the pain persisted. This was done because the patient had no neurological deficit and after he failed six weeks of physical therapy, an MRI scan was ordered by his primary care provider. Here is the sagittal images of his MRI scan. Here are the axial images of the MRI scan. What's the diagnosis here and what treatment options does this patient have? Stay tuned tomorrow and I'll go through the full case. So what is a herniated disc and how do we treat them? Okay, so let's talk about the answers to the case study I presented yesterday. Now remember, we just said that we had a 28 year old male who presented after feeling a pop in his back when doing a deadlift. Now that progressed to pain down his right leg over a period of several days and it's been persistent. He underwent uh, six weeks of physical therapy and had this MRI by his primary care provider. Now, when we're looking at an MRI of the lumbar spine, I always tell patients we're looking from the side view. So if you were facing forward and we were looking at your back from the side, those are the pictures that we're seeing. So in this MRI, the abdomen is here and the back is here, and then this is the spine. So you see that the squares are vertebrae and then these little spaces here are the discs or the cushions that sit between the bones in our back. And in a model of our spine, it looks like this, where you have the bone, the disc, the bone. And if you were to take it and look straight down, you see that the disc sits in between those bones. So the disc has a hard outer coating called the annulus, and then the inside is softer material called the nucleus pulposus. Here is a picture of that. You see the disc, and then the view looking down where you have the hard outer covering, and then the inside softer material called the nucleus pulposus. So what happens is if you get a tear in the disc or a tear in that annulus, some of those inside contents can leak out and then pinch on the nerve. So that's what we see on this MRI scan where you can see this disc that's bulging here at L5 S1. If we look at those axial views, we see that's the disc and this is the back part of the spine called the lamina and those are the areas where the nerves travel. So if I go down to that L5 S1 region right here, boom, we can see that large disc herniation off to the right side that's leaked out and compressing the S1 nerve root causing the sciatica. So disc herniations particularly in young patients, can actually self-resolve. So when that disc material comes out of the disc space, it can actually dehydrate or lose its water concentration because it's lost its blood supply. So they can resolve on their own, which is why we encourage conservative treatment. Now I mentioned that this patient had already had six weeks of physical therapy. So what is the goal of physical therapy in a disc herniation? And that is to help the patient with their pain and to help give time for this disc herniation to go away on its own. Since his symptoms did not improve, the MRI was indicated, which confirmed what we thought was that the patient has suffered a disc herniation. Now, particularly with deadlifts, when you bent over in the flex position, so in other words, when you do a deadlift, you lean over, you're putting a lot of load on your lower back and particularly on that back part of the disc. That can cause a tear in the annulus and it can cause a disc herniation. This is also particularly at risk if you're lifting very heavy weights or you have bad form where we're not engaging your core to help support your spine. So now what do we do? We can offer the patient an epidural steroid injection, which the goal of those types of injections is to go directly to the spot or to be injected right near that disc herniation to alleviate the inflammation that's surrounding that nerve. Now remember, that disc is herniated, it's pressing on the nerve, and that nerve is extremely inflamed. By providing that steroid medication directly on the nerve root, it provides a local effect to the nerve, which can help with pain. That can be done in a series of three injections if the pain seems to be improving. And the goal of those injections is to alleviate pain while the body is resorbing the disc naturally. 
If the patient has persistent pain despite the injections or has a neurological deficit, then surgery may be indicated. And the surgery for this problem is called a microdiscectomy, which is one of the most common procedures that I do. Here is a video that explains how we do a microdiscectomy. So here you see that the disc has herniated and is pinching on that nerve root, causing sciatica, much like in the video of that patient that I showed you his MRI scan. So what we do is we take the patient's back, we can make a very small incision on their back and use a series of dilators to dilate down to the spine to the area where the disc is herniated. And this will allow direct access to the disc itself. We remove a small amount of bone off of the lamina called a hemilaminectomy or a laminotomy in order for the instruments to go down this portal and access the disc. We use instruments to retract the nerve root and then sequentially debulk the disc or remove that fragment that is herniated. Now the patient will undergo some restrictions after surgery, but hopefully within six to 12 weeks, they are back to doing most normal activities. Hope you guys learned something and I'll talk to you guys about another case next week. Did you know that up to 25% of people that have surgery for a disc herniation can experience a re-herniation? Patients that experience a re-herniated disc after surgery are usually subjected to a second surgery, which could even be a lumbar fusion. What if we could prevent that? What if I told you that there was a new medical device that could significantly reduce the risk of lumbar disc re-herniation after having a discectomy? As I talked about in the last video, a disc is a cushion that sits between the bones in our spine and it's kind of like a jelly donut. It's got a hard outer coating and the inside is soft and squishy and you can sustain a tear in your disc by doing something such as picking up something heavy. That can cause the disc to leak material out of the center of the disc which can contact the nerve and cause extreme sciatica or leg pain. One in three patients with a disc herniation actually have a large hole in the disc that led to that material leaking out. When we go in there and surgically remove that piece, there is still exists a hole in that disc that has to close with time. There is a new device that surgeons can implant during the time of a disc herniation that can significantly reduce the rate of reherniation and provide a closure or a barricade, if you will, to prevent disc reherniation. I have been implanting this device for the past two years and has seen tremendous benefit in my practice. Let me know your thoughts.